What is up guys, welcome back to the channel and to more wrestling coverage keeping you updated on all the latest news. Coming up, we got the identity being revealed of the SmackDown mystery woman. I don't know where WWE decided to trade a SmackDown superstar to Monday Night Raw. Ronda Rousey seems to be getting ready for an in-ring return. AJ Styles fire back at CM Punk. And we are discussing everything that went down on this week's Friday Night SmackDown. As Roman Reigns' heel character continued to develop and things are getting interesting. Before we get into it though, you guys already know, make sure to help boy drop it. And for some of that extra perks to the channel, consider becoming a Savage member. Anyways, climb that top rope and let's jump into it. First off, let's talk about some of the latest news coming out of SmackDown. One of the big question was in regards to the identity of the mystery woman during this week's smackdown wwe aired another video another teaser for a mystery woman who is supposed to be either debuting or returning to smackdown the latest clue given is that this woman has blonde hair but fans on social media have already been able to figure out her identity and it wasn't really that hard to figure it out since this week we got to see her full back not just her leg you could kind of see right away that that is Carmella even from the outfit one thing though that caught a lot of people's attention and kind of just spoiled this whole thing it's her small tattoo that we got to see on the woman's arm which happens to be a matching tattoo that Carmella also has in her arm on the same spot so at this point it's 99% likely that this person is Carmella and she is being given a sort of type makeover for her return to action on Smackdown Carmella hasn't been seen on WWE television in about four to five months. So she is certainly due for a return. Last we saw, she was sort of like a babyface, and she ended up feuding with Heel Bailey for a couple of weeks in regard to their friendship. Now, this makeover kind of makes it feel like she is gonna be coming back as a heel. Sticking with the women's division and the latest news in regards to that, it seems like Ronda Rousey has been training with Roddy Piper's daughter, and maybe she's getting ready for that in-ring return. TL Piper, the daughter of WWE Hall of Fame. Roddy Piper recently showed off photos of in-ring training with Ronda Rousey. As a result, this has gotten everyone talking about Ronda Rousey potentially making her way back to the WWE. Her real name, Ariel Piper, she actually worked for AEW at the 2019 All Out Pay-Per-View event where she competed in the Casino Battle Royal match. She has also worked for Women of Wrestling and recently had an injury, so now she's getting back into training this is where ronda rousey comes in as it seems like ronda rousey has been training with her as well as we know ronda rousey decided to go on hiatus from wwe after wrestlemania 35 where she worked a winner take all match in the main event against becky lynch and charlotte flair for the raw and smackdown women's title triple h said back in may that wwe has a great relationship with ronda rousey and that she's welcome back when she wants to return there has been no recent reports about her returning to WWE especially with everything that has been happening but even Stephanie McMahon in recent interviews have indicated that Ronda Rousey will be back to the WWE at some point we just don't know when but hey WWE got the Thunderdome right now and we know that they're doing everything possible to bring those ratings up so I wouldn't be surprised if they trying to get set up for a Ronda Rousey return maybe at the Royal Rumble early next year so they could build off towards a rest WrestleMania match with her. On to some other news, uh, here's something that came out of nowhere. WWE ended up announcing and confirming that yes, what The Miz said on the latest Talking Smack episode was actually true. Mandy Rose has been traded to the Monday Night Raw brand. This is apparently part of the latest John Morrison and The Miz tactics against the Mr. Money in the Bank briefcase holder Otis. So basically, WWE made a trade out of nowhere, and I guess at least they're trying to justify it, but it hardly makes any sense considering that we're supposed to be getting the draft within the next month or so. But let's see what they're gonna end up doing with Mandy Rose on the Monday Night Raw brand. Moving into some other news, it looks like AJ Styles just opened up about CM Punk and what exactly he thinks of him. The former WWE champion AJ shot down a potential showdown with CM Punk, claiming that 
that he is not a big fan of the straight edge superstar. When asked about the possibility of seeing AJ Styles vs CM Punk, AJ stated that a match between the two former WWE champions will almost certainly never happen, before going on to say that he is not a fan. AJ stated the following during one of his recent streams, nope that will never happen, I don't have to go into details about that one, I think it's pretty obvious where things stand between him and I, I am not a fan. If you guys remember Styles and CM Punk issues came to a head this year when CM Punk called out AJ Styles for staying silent in regards to the Black Lives Matters movement that was going on at the time and that a lot of people were speaking up. And while he may not have any desire to get in the ring with CM Punk, AJ Styles has openly spoken about his wish to wrestle Triple H at WrestleMania, indicating that at wrestling the Undertaker was awesome, much like tagging with Triple H in Japan, but now something that he wants to do is actually go against him. He went on to challenge Triple H and even indicated that if he had to step down to NXT just to get to Triple H, he would do just that, as he is up for it. As for what went down on this week's Friday Night Smackdown, the show started off with the big dog Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman coming out and hyping up Class of Champions. Jey Uso came out, he thanked for Heyman for the opportunity last week of getting him. In that Fatal 4-Way match, Paul Heyman says, you don't have to thank me, it was Roman Reigns' idea. Roman go on and deliver some tough words to Jey Uso, letting him know that he deserves this, that this is his place, but that at a class of champions, he's not walking out with the title. This was a really badass, tough, love type of promo from Roman Reigns, which is exactly what we've been asking for. All of this was ruined as we had King Corbin and then Sheamus coming out, saying that they're the one who deserves a title opportunity, and then we get a setup for the main event. Jey Uso takes out King Corbin and Sheamus, and then sets up a tag team match for later in the night. Following this, we get Jeff Hardy versus AJ Styles ending in a no contest in the Intercontinental Championship match. All of this ended with Sami Zayn laying waste to AJ Styles and delivering a haluba kick to Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy then ended up looking rough fading out and then it was reported that Jeff Hardy suffered from dehydration and WWE just continued to make him look extremely weak on a weekly basis. I'm not necessarily sure why they doing this. I don't even know if this is them kind of firing back at what happened on AEW with Matt Hardy, but I just haven't been a fan of WWE making Jeff Hardy looks completely weird out on a weekly basis. One week is injured, the other week is dehydrated, Another week he looks exhausted or he gets attacked from behind so he's not 100% for the match and so on. They really going heavy with this underdog type of storyline. And at this point, I kind of hope that Jeff Hardy just gets one over on AJ Styles or Zami Zayn. We had the Lucha House Party defeating Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro. That actually made no sense at all. Of course, the Street Profit was in the backstage. They were celebrating because Cesaro and Nakamura are always throwing a party nowadays. So the Street Profit got to stay in the backstage to celebrate while the SmackDown champions have a match. Due to distraction, the Street Profit showed up on the big screen. That led to Cesaro and Nakamura losing the match to the house party. Them having the SmackDown champion lose this week hardly makes any sense, considering that they have a champion versus champion match on Monday Night Raw. They should be looking strong going into that match, just like the Street Profit. If you really wanted to give Lucha House Party a victory, then you could have just done that last week, or you could have done it next week after the champions versus champion match happens. We had Nikki Cross defeating Alexa Bliss, Tamina, and Lacey Evans in the fate of four-way match to determine who will face at Bailey at Class of Champions. So it looks like Sasha Banks is gonna be out of commission like we predicted for a couple of weeks. The big highlight on all of this was that Alexa Bliss ended up walking out as she delivered a sister Abigail to Nikki Cross and then simply just left, started walking towards the backstage with a daydreaming look, almost like she is possessed or being controlled by the Fiend. We had Otis defeating John Morrison and of course, John Morrison and The Miss are still trying to get the Money in the Bank briefcase contract. But once again, Otis is just ahead and continue to outsmart them. 
We also had a Bailey addressing everything that went down with her and Sasha Banks last week. Bailey basically indicated that she knew Sasha Banks was going to strike on her, so she just decided to do it first because she's a smart champion. She went on to indicate that she was using Sasha Banks this whole time, but last week she was useless once those titles were off their hands. We also ended up having Bray Wyatt introducing a brand new character, which didn't turn out to be who he wanted as instead the Vince character introduced the Firefly Funhouse new advisor character because he feels like Bray Wyatt needs help running the Firefly Funhouse after losing the Universal Championship and not being able to handle Roman Reigns. And then for the main event we got Roman Reigns and Jey Uso defeating Sheamus and King Corbin. It seems like a part of Roman Reigns gimmick is showing up to matches late because Jey Uso ended up facing Sheamus and King Corbin basically by himself until Sheamus was about to get the victory out comes Roman Reigns wrecks everyone win the match and leave Jey Uso celebrated with Roman Reigns especially on the stage where Jey Uso was keeping a close look at the Universal Championship and Roman Reigns looking right back at him so all of this is getting really interesting as we get into the class of champions pay-per-view that is what went down on this week's Smackdown let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and of course to continue being updated on all the latest news make sure to hit those notifications i'll catch you on the next one so stay savage